Equin will say it's absolutely safe, they can't say that. Nothing's absolutely safe. It only need one thing to go wrong and then we've got to deal with the, the consequences. It's just not good enough. Australia's you know, a smart, rich country. We should be doing better than this. In a worst case spill, it won't get to Burley. So all these people are here because they care for other parts of the coast. That makes you proud as a surfer. What we want to say in what goes on. If there is an oil spill, it won't drift up here. But if they get rights to drill in the bite, a whale sanctuary, if an oil company from overseas can get the rights to drill there, nowhere's safe. This is about us standing up and demanding our government change their systems and their processes. We need systematic change to ensure that we live a better future and that we leave a legacy for all these kids here today that we can all be proud of. The community's making a voice, they're making a noise. This one's not only just about surfing community, this is about uh, Australia's coastline, Australia's youth. If an oil spill happened, you know, to the extent of, of what they're proclaiming, it ruins half of Australia's coastline. And that right there is truly saddening. Take that risk just for money, and it's not even Australian money. Yeah, it truly sucks. Standing along the cliffside of the Great Australian Bight is one of those moments that take your breath away. Home to one of the most stunning marine environments in the world, the Bight lays claims to the largest population of southern right whales on the globe. But they're not alone. Sea lions perch on the rocks and dolphins bob in and out of the waters. The fish population creates a spectrum of colours that you've never seen or dreamt of. It's not just in the water that's amazing. Outside of the water, albatrosses soar and opres dip and dive for food, while the penguins gather around the base of the Nullarbor Cliffs as the oceans lapse against the base of the bite. Stretching for nearly 3,800 kilometers, it is one of the last and truly untouched wonders of the world. More than 85% of marine species in the bite can be found nowhere else on the planet. But if oil giants are able to get their way, it won't remain untouched for long. Imagine a place so unique that over three quarters of the species living there existed nowhere else on the planet. One of the many victims of an oil spill in the bite would be all the wildlife that call its natural wanderer home. Its waters hold 36 species of whales and dolphins, including the world's most important southern right whale nursery and many humpback, sperm and blue and break whales. Australian sea lions swim freely throughout the bite, one of the only places in the world they can be found in large communities. company Equinor want to drill smack bang in the middle of this bite, smack bang in the middle of a national marine park. And while they tell us that, uh, you know, we've, we've mitigated the risk, we've lowered the risk, any risk at all which will jeopardise not only our environment, but our social well-being for communities all up and down the Southern Ocean and for the economies for all of us here, it is not good enough. When marine mammals ingest the oil and inhale the vapour from the crude oil, it is known to cause damage to their respiratory systems, nervous systems and livers. Making contact with these chemicals is unavoidable as they come to the water surface to breathe. Marine mammals aren't the only creatures at risk. A large oil spill would cause an acute die-off of oiled birds. This isn't the only devastating loss, but the deaths could create a trophic cascade of effects that further impact the fisheries. Speaking of local fisheries, a spill even close to that of Deepwater Horizon would be capable of forcing a complete closure of fisheries in the Bight and further east in Bay Strait and Tasman Sea. South Australia's fishing industry is worth an upwards of $440 million, with tourism industries on the coast bringing in over $1 billion annually. According to the Wilderness Society, the two industries are responsible for employing over 10,000 full-time employees. If a spill was to happen, it could shut down the fishing industry and put an end to a majority of the tourism that allows the region to thrive. This would be a massive blow to the local economy. The thing that most people are struggling to understand is that we know what a catastrophic oil spill looks like. We've seen the deep water horizon and it was one of the biggest environmental disasters of all time. 
The blowout by BP spilled 800 million litres of oil into the Gulf of Mexico for 87 straight days. No one wants an oil spill to occur, but if you had to choose a location optimised for a rapid containment operation, the Gulf of Mexico would be at the top of the list. The well was situated in an advanced oil field with quick access to support and resources, and still it took 87 days to stop the spillage. The bite, on the other hand, is about as far from a controlled environment as you can get. On the other hand, is is about as far from a controlled environment as you can get. There's nothing nearby, meaning the extra manpower or resources to cap any spill are non-existent. Any recovery mission would have to do with the Great Australian Bites, strong winds and high seas, tackling waves that can reach as high as 10 meters in winter. More than that, the Stormio 1 well sits at 2,250 meters water depth and 750 meters deeper than the Deepwater Horizon's Macondo well. Deeper suggested drilling areas, stormy terrain, a lack of resources, everything about this proposed drilling in the bay is just asking for a disaster. Just take Deepwater Horizon as your reference point. Remembering how catastrophic this spill was is a very important thing when talking about the bay, not just because it reminds us of what could happen, but because it shows us how bad things can get, and even when in the best scenario. Some people just think, why care about it? It's just an oil spill, it doesn't really affect me. But really, oil spills aren't a one in a million experience. They happen fairly often, and even in our own backyard. Just a couple of years ago, an offshore oil and gas well in Australia leaked continuously in the ocean for two whole months. The spill ultimately ended up releasing around 10,500 litres of oil into our waters. Worse yet, it wasn't until recently that the Australian public were informed and still, details of the well and its whereabouts and operators remain a secret. When these spills inevitably happen, it's not the companies that really suffer, it's the people and the marine life and even the environment that take the biggest hits. We shouldn't stand for anything that is so obviously threatening to our own livelihood or to our own surroundings. We need to stand together and push back to protect our environment against the relentless greed of oil giants. The good news is, We've kicked out oil corporations from the bite twice, and we can do it again. But the only issue is, Stat Oil is a company willing to take risks where no other company will. And their safety record is getting worse. The number of spills and incidents at Stat Oil has increased catastrophically in the last year. And it's up to us to keep the bite and its communities and incredible ocean ecosystems that depend on it safe from big oil. One of the many environmental challenges of oil are getting it in the first place. Vast deposits of petroleum are inconveniently located beneath the floor. Accidents happen and sometimes environmental disasters are the result. But drilling for oil at sea does have one main positive environmental factor. A dormant oil rig provides a home for many forms of life. Underwater, the steel tubes that once made up a platform provide a surface for marine growth. It becomes a geometrical and symmetrical artificial reef. Sponges, corals and other reef attract fish and bring life back to our oceans. When a platform is decommissioned, by law it has to be removed within 5 years, but they do provide a structure for amazing artificial reefs and sometimes are left to stand. This is also recognised as a program called Rigs to Reef as it provides recreational fishing and diving opportunities, which also brings back our tourism industry to Australia. What are your thoughts on drilling in Australia's bite? As you've seen from the past events, just one spill or leak from the bite's entire ecosystem could collapse, not to mention the loss of income for thousands of Aussie families who rely on the bite's tourism and fishing industries. Clearly you seem to have a strong stance, but how are you so sure it is the wrong thing to do? Well, sustained pressure from people like you is working. BP and Chevron have pulled out of the region and now I think it's time to tell Equinor to get out too. The company is responsible for a serious oil well blowout just a couple of years ago in the Northern Sea. It's definitely time to show big oil that you won't stand for oil giants putting our pristine coastline at risk. 53,000 is the actual number of leaks and the barrel per day. 4,768 were the number of dead animals collected as far as the 13th of August. This wasn't long after the spill. 7,500 was the number of employees it involved in the cleanup. 1,000 is the BP's initial prediction of the leak of barrels per day. 170 was the number of vessels needed to engage in the glass roots cleanup activity.
So if an oil spill was to happen, what would we do? We'll be forced to make the right decision and protect the Great Australian Bike for good. This is my country and I love it very deeply. I will fight for it.